For years now, Sony has been disrupting the market with their incredible mirrorless cameras. And on March 29th of 2023, Sony announced this new camera, the ZV. E1, an important camera for both consumers and Sony alike. Now, you might be thinking this is the Sony ZV-1 and that wouldn't be the case. This is my mock-up. But I did pre-order the camera and I wanted to share my thoughts because again, I think this is a really important camera that Sony just announced. You see, the Sony ZV-1 is the first full-frame video-centric camera that was designed from the ground up with pro-level parts, while also being aimed at a broader consumer market at a more compelling price point compared to their more professional camera lines like the Sony A7S and the A7R, not to mention the FX line, which is interesting, our little mock-up here, because the ZV-E1 shares the same processor, the same sensor found in the FX6, which is a Netflix-approved camera that sells for like $6,000. And again, that makes it compelling, but not as compelling as some of the other features. Let's talk about it. I kind of like this little thing. It feels good. I'm gonna, this is gonna be a fun camera. So how did we get here? Well, up until 2013, most mirrorless cameras were primarily limited to the APS-C and micro four-thirds sensor type cameras. But that changed when Sony dropped the A7 and the A7R again in 2013, both of which included autofocus. And here's what's up. Check it out. The A7 7 ZV-E1 has the best autofocus in any video camera available by Sony today. It's just true. You see, it's got that new fancy chip, the AI processing chip that adds all kinds of functionality. You can track insects, trains, planes, automobiles, people, multiple people, and it's got so much functionality added into an already great camera, the A7S III. The following year in 2014, Sony drops the legendary A7S III as mentioned. Now, Sony gave it the moniker S for light sensitivity. And this is a big deal when we talk about the ZV-1 because it's not just about shooting at night and sunrise. It's about having the flexibility as a creator, as a filmmaker, whatever, B-roll, to be able to film in multiple frame rates. If you want slow motion, well, you gotta push up your shutter speed uh, to uh, a lot, right? Like, if you're shooting HD, at 240 frames per second, well, your shutter speed needs to be like 500. What's that gonna do to the light performance of your camera? It's gonna crush it, unless you're using a full frame camera, especially the A7S III or the new ZV-E1. Exciting times. And over the last 12 years, Sony has continued to refine the now legendary 12 megapixel backside illuminated CMOS sensor. You try to say that. And it's an absolutely incredible sensor that was first revealed or released in, again, the A7S III. Now, here's what's really interesting. The A7S II was released in 2015, and it, it was good, but it's like we always want more, right? We want the latest, the greatest, we want the best. We wanna be able to capture the stuff that happens in our head, and that can be really challenging. However, finally, Sony released the long-anticipated Sony A7S III, and the reviews were insane, and of course they were. This camera did things that other cameras at the time just hadn't done. In fact, a lot of the video cameras today, hybrid cameras, cine cameras, still don't offer the features and functionalities of my beloved A7S III. Hey, I dig slow motion. I dig having that flexibility. 4K, 120 frames per second, 15 stops of dynamic range, 10-bit, 422 color codex. If you're not sure what that means, either do I. I just know it looks beautiful in camera, and that's what I'm about. I'm about getting the tools that makes my job easier because I am the guy nutty enough to walk out on a full moon with like three or four cameras because I got to be vlogging, right? I got to capture me doing the stuff I'm doing. <laughs> 
And then I need to take a photo, so I need the A1. And what about time lapse? Like how often do you get a full moon? Not very often. And if it's a blood moon, that's like once once a year. And does anybody have to die? That makes me nervous. What's happening here? I want to know. So the A7S III drops and the reviews on YouTube, amazing. Technical masterpiece. The perfect camera. My new favorite mirrorless. The last camera you'll ever need. That's ridiculous, man. Who are you talking to? We, we like to buy new toys. <laughs> now you might be thinking, but Brian, there's a lot of other video-centric cameras, ZV cameras, like the original ZV-1. By the way, a lot of the footage that I've been sharing in this video was shot on this ZV-1 at Yellowstone with my A7S III. And the fact of the matter is this camera was not built from the ground up to really produce amazing video. It wasn't. This camera is based on the old RX100. This camera, which is great, it takes great photos, great video, but it was designed kind of for the middle of the road, hybrid, photos first, videos second, lots of cool features, but when you build a camera to do both things, you're gonna have some issues. This sensor size is 20 megapixels. And if you're thinking, well, what about the ZV-E10? Well, that's based on the camera that first came out in 2016, the A6300. And this shoots beautiful 4K. It's oversampled 6K, but it's got horrendous rolling shutter because the processor can't keep up with all that data coming off the sensor. And that's where that beautiful A7S III sensor comes into play because it's only 12 megapixels, which makes the readout speed much, much better, which makes it possible to capture 4K 120 in beautiful 10-bit with autofocus because there's less data coming off the sensor. It's not oversampling, it's not line skipping, it's just this is the image, boom, let's process it. So here's what's up. When I watched the uh, product announcement for this camera, when I learned about the price point and all the features that I would have access to, I got pretty excited and I pre-ordered. Now I don't know, there are some issues. Overheating, I've got ideas about how to overcome that if it's a uh, problem, but fact of the matter is I need to get it, I need to test it, I need to use it, and I have some great ideas about how I want to use this camera for me moving forward. Maybe this will help you. What do I know? I just like making videos. So first of all, you can't get the A7S III sensor and processor any cheaper than buying the new ZV-E1, period. Full stop, that's it. And furthermore, when you buy that camera, instead of like a used A7S III, you get all these great features like the very best autofocus and in a video-centric camera, big deal. Okay, well, Brian, the, the new autofocus just launched with the A7R 5 that's true, but that's photo-centric. And I, I don't, no, 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 I'd rather have a camera for photography like my a7s3 it takes great photos it really does especially in low light or i'd rather use my a1 now furthermore that that new ai chip it's got so many autofocus modes like insects i'm into macro i want to go out and make the, an incredible video about the most beautiful subject when it comes to macro photography which by the way is bees not wasps they're a little scary. Bees, bees are beautiful. And will I use this camera to take some of the B-roll? Absolutely. Will I use this camera to, to really capture me filming and, and taking the photos? You bet. Will I probably wear a GoPro? Will I look like one of those crazy YouTubers? I will. And I'm not ashamed of it either. Because I've decided this is my path and I'm willing to walk it. So come at me, I dare you. This is a big deal. This little mock-up camera, which one day will be the real ZV-E1, it has the very best IBIS and active stabilization on any camera minus maybe the R5, okay? Because I watch so many videos and I'm not just talking the new dynamic stabilization, but the active looks a lot better. And I saw one video in particular where they tested the A7 IV active stabilization against the ZV-E1 active stabilization. 
and it was night and day twice as good twice as steady which means that's going to be an absolutely and i'm looking around for my 20 millimeter this isn't it this is the 35 millimeter lens but let's pretend this is 20 millimeter that is such a great lens for vlogging when you want some background blur and if you're using active stabilization then you're somewhere around a 22 millimeter equivalent after the crop and whatnot and then yes the dynamic stabilization holy smokes I hate gimbals I'm not I'm not doing it I just I don't want to learn gimbals I have too much gear I'm already carrying so this is really exciting and then we have this kind of framing and tracking thing I saw Dan Watson uh, hat trick to Dan he did this kind of cool shot where he was tracking a vehicle and he kind of swung around had this beautiful movement and all of a sudden it just the shot looked gimbal like and it looked like the kind of stuff I've been wanting to try to take with my a7s3 and it's it's kind of okay but but this is going to allow me to do that kind of stuff much more uh, easily wicked cool I dig and here's another really great example why I think this is going to be great for me. This is the smallest and lightest full frame camera available from Sony and pretty much anyone. And I typically, like when I was in Yellowstone, I used this to vlog. And when you're using a one inch sensor, you get a lot of grain when in low light and things like that. And again, no problem. Small, light, compact. Like this is a dream. Like to, to hold this and to think I could have this on a little tripod. Yeah, you could be the greatest. You could be the best. This is this is this is a dream. Excuse me, coming through, YouTuber. Very important YouTuber coming through. Oh my God! Seriously, this is like how light this is, and then you do this kind of thing, and you kind of like you do this, not really, but like, and then you like get the steady footage with that new active stabilization. You dig in what I'm putting down? This is a big deal. Furthermore, I love the fact that it's got breathing compensation installed in the camera. Now, here's the thing. Yes, we've all heard it a million times. Sony, please update these cameras if you can. And I'm going to, unpopular opinion, unpopular. We don't know. I don't. I, I'm not going to speak for you, but I don't know what it's like to update a camera. I don't know if Sony can put in the uh, lens compensation, lens breathing compensation to the a7s3 maybe probably can they put all the stuff in maybe well some of the stuff is based on a new chip the ai chip and i i kind of know or think that they can't add that so i think it's a balance yes sony for the love of god update these cameras at least put out some information so we know the the consumers who spend our hard-earned money yada 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 blah 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 firmware update you get it so the reason why I think this is a big deal for consumers who like to buy cameras, for creators, is that we've never really had a video-centric camera where Sony didn't skimp. And they did that with the ZV-E1 and they gave us the amazing processing power and image quality of the A7S III. It's, uh, it's a lot cheaper than that camera. And, and that's that's exciting because if this camera does well who knows where sony will go i know they'll go back to the budget friendly that's where a lot of sales are made but if this does pretty well well then we might see more cameras like this in the future and this technology is getting wicked good really cool now i still like here's the thing i i'm going to shoot in manual i'm going to take photos i'm going to do i'm going to mix up some street photography with some cinematic shots and like i am so excited for spring and then summer and fall and videos and i'm, I'm gonna head to moab with my girlfriend and I, I like to capture stuff and that's why i think this camera looks really great it could be a fantastic camera for b-roll it could be a fantastic camera to jump out of the car when you come across this amazing vista and the sun is coming down and it's absolutely beautiful and you can feel your blood pumping and then you hear stake your claim and you think yes i want to do that and you jump out of the car and you capture that moment in however way you want slow motion time lapse 
and this camera might be perfect for that. However, overheating. Now, overheating, I'm not going to lie, that is something that scares me. And I had a moment last night and I started shivering and I was... <laughs> but here's the thing. I'm going to test it out. I'm going to find out. There are things we can do. Yeah, and here's the thing, if it overheats, well, this camera, the ZV-E1, has some of the very best looking HD because it's actually 4K downsampled into a HD deliverable. It looks absolutely phenomenal, and there's other things we can do too. Like maybe I'll test it with 8-bit. Maybe I'll just use it for a bunch of vlog clips and I can make it work. Maybe down in my studio, it's fine. It's cool down here. It's like 68 degrees. I don't know, but I want to try because this is Sony's latest and greatest. And this is what I do. It's my fun. It's my fulfillment. It's my income. Hopefully we get things rolling again on this new channel. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I place my pre-order. How about you? Again, glad to have you here. Did I say that? Welcome if you're new. My name is Brian. This is One Perfect Shot. If you had one chance, one opportunity, would you capture it? Peace. I'll see you on the flip side.